what a beautiful day for the beach. Unbelievable. Wow. Hey guys. Hey everybody, wanted to bring you out here to Dunedin Causeway. And uh, this is in Tampa Bay. And I wanted to bring you out to see the Blue Ox in all its glory here on the beautiful sandy beach. And I wanted to go over a couple of things I have going on here. We've got the Cobra Tech doors on, the half doors. And I'm gonna show you that. I also have a nice mesh top, which is perfect for this weather. So, uh, Let's go ahead and take a walk around the truck. And like I said, I have the Cobra Tech doors on. On this side, I have them in the full configuration. And you can see my mesh top. Nice on a day like this. And I'll walk you around the truck here. Okay, bringing you around to the driver's side, you can see I have the one top off and one top on and uh, but a beautiful day like this with the mesh top it's a great day to take the tops off you can see how easy that is to do now I will be making bags for these to keep them protected it just makes a whole new look with the with the half doors on this and the wind blows through with the with the mesh top it's just it's just a great great look it's a lot of fun I mean it just changes the whole truck to something really really fun like it's not already enough fun so bringing you back over here on the passenger side where I still have them as a full full door configuration I made some changes up here to my side rails which allow these doors to fit a lot better than any doors would with the way our side rails come from American General. Uh, I've talked about that in the video which is coming up. The whole install, how to put these doors together is coming up right after this. I just wanted to have it out here on the beach where you could see what it looked like uh, before they're installed and all put together and then you can see how that happens and what you need to go through to make that happen and it's not all that difficult but give john at cobra tech a call if this is something you're interested in uh, i've got a number of guys that have been reaching out to me reaching out to some other people and i'm going to put a link to his site to make it a little bit easier i don't get anything from this this is this is not my deal this is just i love these doors and if you have something that I love, I'm gonna do the same thing for you. I expect nothing from anybody. This is just what we do in the Humvee community, help each other out. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I got more stuff coming. See you soon. So you've probably already seen the video I did where uh, I had already mounted the driver's side Cobra Tech combo full door half door uh, on my home v and i wanted to do that before i really got to an in-depth look at how and what it takes to actually put these things together you're going to get them in raw steel uh, i had already done a video on that as well so you can see but this is going to be a little more in-depth where i can i have the bags out of the bags uh that are marked and we'll kind of go over this as you can see there's uh eight page instructions goes has here what you should have in your kit and a checklist if you would and uh, talks about the doors how to do it how to put everything together tips and tricks on making it easier and uh, but as you all well know all these trucks are a little bit different they're all going to have different things that are going to make it easier or more difficult uh, including the side rails on the trucks which stick out too far on a number of trucks that i've done tops for and I did on my truck change the side rails. Not everybody's going to want to do that. I understand it. However, if you don't do it, you're really not going to get a really good seal that you can get with these doors and the soft doors and your X doors and any kind of doors you have. By doing something you might not want to do, you're going to get a better fit and less water coming into your truck. We're going to go over that a little bit later as I get into the 
install on the truck of the passenger doors. But let's take a look at this. You have your hinges, and uh, they're wrapped real nice, keep them from getting scratched, powder coated. The hardware to mount those. These are the carriage bolts that go down through the top so that uh, you can connect that top to your bottom when you want to do that. These go into the top piece. These aluminum knobs then spin on to secure the top to the bottom. Okay? Just kind of go through the list here. Strikers. Front striker, rear striker. The front ones are the same for both sides. The rears are different. One's for the passenger, one's for the driver's side. The hardware for those, you're actually going to remove the soft door or whatever uh, hinge, I'm sorry, whatever uh, strikers that you have on the truck now and replace with these. And these are for the straps that keep the door from going all the way forward and hitting your truck or hitting the mirrors or whatever happens. Sends brand new ones. A lot of us already have these on our doors, but you've got new ones and you've got the ones that attach to the truck itself with these straps that will go over this to keep the door from going too far. That's kind of nice too. You also get the three Allen keys to fit all the different screws, machine screws that he sends. There are three different sizes. The small one is actually for the, uh, the latch hardware. And this is what you use. This comes bagged separately. The keys for the latches to put those on the doors. Like I said, everything is very well spelled out. You have the grab handles for inside the door and the hardware for that, which goes through the outside of the door. And right here, and right here. These two holes will go through. The handle goes on the inside, and you tighten it up from the inside. That allows you to pull the door shut. The windows and the window hardware. The windows are actually two pieces that sandwich the door in between them. Put this on, put this on the inside, screw it together, and it sandwiches it in. All the trim that goes around the edge, you have the edge trim here, and it is specific, it is marked to what door it goes to. I found a rubber mallet works very easily to, you start it just a little bit below the edge, tap it all the way around, nice and secure, and by the time I got over to the other side, it was just a little bit below the edge. Exactly right. There's also a seal for the tops of the doors that get uh, secured on. He sends you the black uh, sealer to put those on. And also on those grab handles, there's a cap to hide the uh, nut on the inside. So I think that pretty much goes over everything. You also have an edge trim piece that goes on. And okay, so I think that kind of goes over everything. What I'm going to do now is start a step at a time and going as it's instructed on here as to what you do. Okay, so page one of the instructions is your checklist. Go over this. Make sure you have everything. I had no problems. Everything was marked. It was here. Page two is a little advice on prepping your doors for paint, sanding them, priming them. And if it's something you're doing, you know, this kind of spells it out on how to do that. If you're having uh, perhaps an automotive painter do it, they already are probably very well aware of how aluminum needs a little special attention. So the paint sticks. I had a friend of mine Raptor coat mine. I actually did my truck myself and I could have done these. However, I'm too damn busy. So I had him do it. He does Ferraris and Porsches and Corvettes and, uh, you know, Mopar. I figured it was well within his skill set. So I had him do it. So then you go on to page three. And uh, this is where you actually get into the assembly and installation, which you're going to do after you get your doors back. 
And what I'm going to do is start with the putting the trim pieces on. Now, he has them marked. This is the rear lower, which is for the door I don't have on the table. So I'll set that to the side. This is for the front upper. Okay. And then this one is for the front lower. And that's the one I have on the table right now. And you do need to put these on in a specific manner with the bubble on the inside. Now here is where I found a rubber mallet very handy. And again, the bulb side is going to go in. I started just a little bit below the top. Yep, a little bit higher. There we go. And kind of with a, a downward tap, just put it on all the way around. I'll speed up some of these things so you're not bored out of your mind as you watch me do this. And there we go. Perfect. Okay. Now you'll also notice here on page three it does show the windows, but this is actually, and it states it here, this is actually the last thing you're going to do. After you get them all together, on the truck, mounted, dialed in, you'll put these windows in. But you're going to wait till the very last to do that step. So I'm going to finish up these doors here, putting the trim on, and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're to the part in the instructions where we're going to install the hinges. And as per the instructions, we're going to only do the three here and the two up here. There's separate very similar but separate for here because this is where your strap is going to go on the inside so the, the that particular that particular hardware is a little bit longer to make up for the thickness of this so that's something you're going to do once they're on the truck now we're only going to put these on and another thing they mentioned have the the smoothest shiniest side towards the paint so that it doesn't scratch it in the final really bearing down on that and tightening these to the doors. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do these loosely. Keep them loose so that you can adjust them once you get them fitted on your hinges on your Humvee. Okay, so I've gone through that step by putting these in. You can see I've got a little bit of flexibility here back and forth because like I said before, every truck's a little bit different and you're going to have to tweak these once you get them on set in place on your truck and that'll allow you to move it up and down and it does help to have a second person what i found on mounting my doors was you can put it in place everything looks good you tighten it down you open that door and it sagged it fell just slightly but enough that the latch doesn't hit the striker properly so you want to have somebody helping you that lifts it just a little bit to make up for that sag when you let go of it because of the weight of the doors, it's going to fall a little bit. I don't really think there's any way to prevent that. So, let's go on to the next step. Okay, the next step in the instruction is to go ahead and mount this grab handle on the inside of the door. And I'm kind of excited because I ordered what I needed last night to actually create an inside door panel. And it might be something that uh, some of you guys are interested in. I'm going to have it to where it's very easy install. You can probably, the way I have it in my mind is, with these going through the door and the grab handle going on the other side and being screwed into place, that'll help keep that door panel in place. And then I may do a Velcro fastening, but that'll all come to uh, the future here when... I get a little bit of time to deal with that, but I think an inside panel on these would really dress it up nicely. Okay, moving along to the next step in the instructions is the latches. Okay, and uh, I pulled out the hardware. It's four of the cap screws, 
four stainless steel washers, and four of what he uses on just about everything. I guess they call these castle nuts. I've heard them called castellated. It has a nylon inside it to keep it from loosening. Uh, it can make it a little difficult to start them. You can't just screw them down with your hand and be happy with it for a little while. You get it started and then you pretty much have to get a wrench out to get it to where you want it to be. So I'll go ahead and uh, install these and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've got these in loose. You know, this thing, you're gonna want it to be able to give it the flexibility to move back and forth. Uh, it just, once you determine where the striker is gonna go, then you can adjust this so it hits that striker just right. It allows the door to shut and not hit the striker and bounce back. You want it to continue on after it hits the striker to go past it. And uh, the, the cut on that actual latch allows that to happen. Okay, what I'm talking about here is you have your latch and you have this spring-loaded device which moves back and forth when you pull the latch. But this is mounted to your truck. This can't hit here. It has to hit right on that angle so that it pushes it in and allows it to bypass. It goes past that striker and then springs out on the other side, capturing it. So this is slotted, and there's a fine line between wrong and right. But when you get it dialed in just right, that door will shut perfect. The tension will hold it nice and tight, the rubber gasket all the way around. You also get these. This is what you use to open it when you're sitting in the seat. You can pull it to open up your door. So that is the latch assembly. I have that in place. The instructions now talk about going out to the truck and mounting your strikers. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and move forward to the top of the door and then we'll come back to this when we're actually out of the truck and I'm talking about some other issues. Okay, moving along in the directions, the next thing that they talk about after the strikers is putting in the carriage bolts. Now the carriage bolts go through the bottom of the top bottom of the top piece. They're squared, so when they go through, they catch, and then there's a little push nut that goes right on that, and that holds it into place. So that when you take your tops on and off the bottoms, you don't lose the carriage bolts because they fell out and rolled around the bottom of your truck somewhere. Also, a 7 16 cent wrench, you can push that on. All right, I'll go ahead and finish that up. Okay, as I finish up the carriage bolts, and I know what you're thinking. Why are you using a 7 16 inch wrench when really all you need to do is grab the, the knob that goes on that anyway and put that on and let that, you know, secure it. Well, it's not that deep. You have to take into consideration that there's gonna be another quarter inch piece of aluminum in here. So this won't go far enough down to make sure those are nicely secured. So, the suggestion to use a 7 16 wrench, that was a good one. So, okay, on to the next thing here. Uh, and this is where the rubber seal goes in. On, rather. It goes on. And it is specific to the door. Different doors have different lengths. It also is specific on which way you put it. You want it to be like this. With the gap behind towards the inside of the truck. And this is where you use the black gobbledygooky scent. Put a bead on it. And don't put too much and it squeezes out and goes all over the place. This is just gonna seal it. Put a bead on here. And then I, those carriage bolts really help line it up where it needs to go. Like that. And then what I have is some clamps I got. I think they were 79 cents at Harbor Freight. Got a bunch of them. Kind of clamp it on. Push down. Make sure the silicone 
makes contact. And uh, there, I'll let that set up. And then uh, we'll go on out to the truck and continue with the installation out there at the Blue Ox. All right, now we're getting to the fun part of the install where you actually get to mount your doors. You, you have your hinges on here, make sure they're loose. These should be a little bit looser. No, the bottom is loose. And he's gonna go right in where your existing soft doors, in my case, would go. Okay. I have my latch in and my striker, which will be adjusted later. I'm kind of taking a good look. I need to come back a little bit more. Wiggle it a little bit. I get where, where I want it to be. And then just tighten it up, check your gaps. Have it raised just a little bit there. Now it's gonna to wanna to fall. Even after you tighten that up, it's gonna to wanna to fall. So overcompensate for that. Lift it slightly. Again, this is easier with two people. Lift it slightly, tighten it up. And when you let go, it's gonna fall a little bit as you open the door. Should be centered right where it needs to be. I'll go ahead and take care of this. And uh, then we'll move on to the top. Pretty much got it centered right where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. And I can say one thing. This procedure is really about the same whether you have the combo like I have, half doors and full doors. Or if you just have the full doors, there's a few steps you don't need to take. But overall, I'm thinking they're about the same. But wow, it's much easier to tighten these up when you don't have a, a door top to deal with. Just reach over the top of the uh, bottom half and easy to reach all the hardware, the nuts and bolts and stuff. So we'll get these tightened up. And I've got that third one right here that is for the, uh, the strap to keep the doors from going forward. <sighs> okay. Nice and tight. And there we go. And then I'll I'll adjust the striker and the latch. My gap's looking good all the way around. So I'm about ready to put on the top half. All right, have the hinges on. I have my little uh, door strap on. As you can see, I let go and it stops the door from going into the, you know, mirror or front of the truck and the latch I've placed my striker where I feel it needs to be look at that does that sound nice or what oh man one more time nice all right we got the bottom on it's closing nicely. The gap looks good all the way around. I can see the rubber bulb is touching the frame. You remember we played around with this up here by cutting my side rails because I didn't like the fact that I could get my finger up in there, which told me the bulb wasn't going to touch. If the bulb doesn't touch, then you have ceiling problems. But on to the fun. Now you can run the half doors or rain's coming, pull it out of the bag, which I haven't made yet. You have these four aluminum twist knobs. Spin those on. My fingers aren't working today, but it actually is pretty quick. I've done this a few times now. And I tighten them down real nice and tight. I just have two on for right now. There you go. That change I made up here helped a lot. It's The bulb is touching all the way up there. All the way around. I've got a really nice seal on this door. I mean, this is sweet. If I can get the same thing on the rear door, I tell you what, that's a home run.
keep going. Okay, continuing on with the fun, we're going to the back door. And we'll just lift them into place and just like the front, just repeat the process. Fit them in. Hinges are loose. This one is not in because that's where your strap goes on the inside. So we'll do the rest of them first, do that one last. And that will keep this door from coming all the way into the front door, which you don't want. So, and then we'll uh, adjust the striker and the door latch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and uh, we'll continue. All right, so putting the top on the rear is just like putting the top on the front. You know, the knobs, the whole shebang that I went through a little bit earlier. And actually this door with the changes I made in the side rail shuts very nicely. I will say it's not as tight as it is in the front. It's nice and tight here. It's tight along the top back here. But remember, when you have your top on, your top is going to come and get sandwiched between this panel and your C-pillar. So that gap there is really a non-issue. So closes nicely, everything looks good. I wanna bring you around and show you the striker. And let's go ahead and bring it around here so I can show you the striker. Like I said before, they are side specific. And this is how you want this to look. Right there with the bolts of the screws, the machine screws on the inside so that you're, uh, yeah, you know, latch. So your latch hits this, okay? And again, your fuel bezel coming out makes it so much easier to get to this back here. And because I have an aluminum door that I've been wanting to put on for two years. Today is a perfect opportunity to take care of that as well. So I'm going to grab the windows and show you how to install those. Okay, now we come to the part where you put the windows in, which is pretty much the last thing you're going to do on this install. The window opens in the front. This part opens, slides back. And there's a frame. Once you get this in, there's a frame that goes screws on the inside. I'll put that on. And then he supplies you with the screws. I'm just going to put a couple to hold it into place. Of course, I'm right handed, so. my tool working right here. All right, here we go. Now you could probably use a power driver for this, but you know, I'm just not so sure that'd be the right route to go. I don't want to over tighten them. It is aluminum. And there's always a, the, you know, issue that you could over tighten and strip so if you do it by hand, it kind of gives you a little bit more feel. Gives you a little bit more feel for what you're doing. So I'm going to put a few of these in here. Top, sides, bottom. Make sure it seems to be all centered up correctly. And then I'll fill in the screws that I didn't get randomly. So... So there you can see, and again, I haven't put them all in. And remember, I didn't put all the four nuts back on this either, the spin uh, aluminum knobs, so it's a little bit loose there. Once you have the top on, it's gonna tighten up, up here, but uh, put all four knobs on nice and tight. But look at that, that's a nice finish. Really, really beautiful. I'm very, very happy with this. Okay, so the rear, just like the front, 
pop it in, it has a bottom, the window slides back, put the frame on, screw it in place. Uh, I'm going to put my door on here today, that'll look nice, but uh, yeah, looks good. Nice stud when you shut the doors, really happy with these. I'm going to do a full all around look at the truck once I get the new black top on it and uh, give you a look at what it looks like all put together. Thanks for watching.